What's up, yo? What's up, everybody? This is Sports 360. I'm Jeff Fennell, and I'm here with my man, Rob Duran. Rob, what's up? What's going on, Jeff? How's it going? Well, well, I don't know how it's going, man. One of us missed the game um, <laughs> on the prediction, and I think it was me. <laughs> Forty-five, seventeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I said. <laughs> Forty-five, seventeen. Kansas City. Uh, that was the prediction, and didn't quite turn out that way, man. Um, but I, I guess I was right in this. Somebody got a whooping. Remember, I said that. I said Kansas City was going to give them a whooping. Well, <laughs> Kansas City got whooped, <laughs> man. Uh, I tell you, wow, they got whooped yesterday. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, Brady played a good game. You know, um, their offense was very controlled. Um, they didn't make any mistakes and so forth. But it was that defense, the, to me, the defense was the key because they just totally took Mahomes and that Kansas City offense out of the game. So um, hats off to the, to the Buccaneers. Hats off to Brady, man. They're Super Bowl champs, and they deserved it. Yeah, that, that Todd Bowles defense, man, Devin White was a guy who I feel like he was involved in every single play on defense. The guy was absolutely everywhere. That that front line for them was lights out. Um, and then I got to give it up to, to the defensive backs, who I actually questioned a little bit, even though I picked Tampa to win. I kind of questioned them a little bit. They'd be able to contain Tyreek Hill. And they did an amazing job. You know, at, at first they were doubling both Hill and Kelsey. And I know Kelsey got his 10 catches, but a lot of that came in garbage time. But, wow, man, the way that defense played, they were just lights out. Yeah, they were. I mean, you know, they, they played, you know, the, the two deep safeties most of the game. And they were yeah. just saying, you're not beating us deep. You're just not. And they really couldn't, the Chiefs really couldn't get anything going underneath because of the relentless pressure that Mahomes was under, you know, yeah. I'm telling you, man, I, I, I went outside this morning and I was, you know, putting the recycle, you know, stuff in the can. And I'm telling you, Rob, I think I saw Mahomes being chased by the can, <laughs> by the can, by, by Tampa's front, front four today. I thought I saw him running right past my block, man. I think they were still chasing that guy. <laughs> Man. <laughs> wow, man. Well, he had about 500 yards of, of running around, basically. He which sure is, did, didn't he? It's insane. I man. never saw a quarterback run backwards as much as he <laughs> did. And But, man, he made some throws. That throw that he made, it was in the fourth quarter, where he was horizontal to the ground. Yeah. Was wow. just amazing. It was just amazing. And he hit the guy in the face mask. Yeah, and he had two kind of throws like that, similar to that. That yeah. both hit the guy hit the receiver. So I don't know how the heck he got he pulled those off, man. Only he could do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean it, it was really remarkable. But I you know, again, I, I think the pressure and we, we talked about, you know, one of the concerns for Kansas City was their offensive line. Yeah. how many injuries they had and it was a makeshift line and it really showed and Tampa's line was so strong you know Jason Pierre Paul was coming on one end Shaq Barrett on the other end and then they got a push every now and then up the middle from Sue um yeah. I mean it was it, you know Mahomes and it got to the point where Mahomes was on skates it's like even before the pressure came, he was starting to feel it. You know, he had happy feet, you know, not that, you know, yeah. and, and again, he was just, he was under so much pressure all day long. Yeah. And it really reminded me, and I know we spoke about this a little bit off air, kind of like Brady against the giants in that Super Bowl when they had Michael Strahan and just the amount of pressure that Brady was under in that Super Bowl. This is what it kind of reminded me of that Mahomes facing, except a lot more pressure. It felt like, I felt like, the the line was just going after Mahomes on every single play, and they were not letting up. And you know, they only scored nine points, no touchdowns. Insane. No touchdowns. Yeah, for yeah. that kind of offense. 
Mm-hmm. I will tell you, Rob, I, I thought I thought there were two turning points in the first half. Um, I thought the first one was when Tampa got the ball for the third time. You know, they had, you know, punted the ball away twice. And then when they got the ball for the third time, they ran the ball three times in a row. Yeah. And, you know, Fournette got a, a first down. And then they started mixing in, you know, some screens you know, so, you know, some short passes with, with, you know, additional runs. But it seemed to me that once they, when they ran the ball three times in a row, got a first down and then started mixing it up, it seemed from that point on the Kansas City defense was on its heels and that the Tampa Bay offense had the upper hand because they went down, got the touchdown to Gronk, and, you know, they were rolling after that. Yeah, and once that got going, as soon as they got the run game going, and, and props to Fournette, who was cut by Jacksonville, he was kind of like an afterthought on the waiver wire, ends up signing with the Bucks, and now he's a Super Bowl champion. Props to him, because he, he had about 90 yards rushing, I think it was 89 yards to be exact, rushing. And he just kind of opened up the door for the play action for Brady. And, and with, when it comes to play action and Tom Brady, it's kind of a, you know he's going to get it done. As soon as that game opened up for him to be able to, like you said, do the screen passes or sometimes try to get down the field, stuff like that, it was game over. Yeah. And 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 Fournette ran really hard too. I mean, there were a couple yeah. of times when Breland came off the corner and tried to tackle him. And and Fournette like was like, Are you serious? And it just like ran him over. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, and I kind of looked at Breland when, when that happened. And, and, you know, I don't know how much of that he took with him back to the secondary. You know what I mean? But <laughs> that's got to be deflating, you know, you because you're coming off the corner and he was running hard. And that's a strong, yeah. he's a strong running back. And, um, you know, he there were times he just plowed over him, you know. And it, it, to me, it was just symbolic of how Kansas City – had the game taken to them, you know, Tampa Bay was just taking it to them uh, physically, you know, up front on the, uh, on, on defense, but also for that man, when he was getting up to the outside, he made those corners pay. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and props too to their offensive line. Cause I saw a few blocks, yeah. the offensive linemen were following those running backs down the field and making these crazy blocks that just kind of opened it up, especially on that Fournette touchdown. That one, I, I forget yeah. which offensive lineman it was, but he was down the field with him, making that key block to ha- have him score. It was they played great, great football on both sides of the ball, and it was as as balanced an attack as you could possibly have in a game. Yeah, because I mean, you look at Brady's line. I mean, he threw for two hundred and one yards, so it wasn't like you know he didn't throw for it was, this wasn't Doug Williams you know what i mean when, when yeah. or some of the other quarterbacks <laughs> that have lit up the super bowl um but it was very efficient very efficient yeah. you know um you know his his passer rating was high his completion percentage was high and he just he he called a good game you know i shouldn't say he you know left which called a good game and um yeah, they just again they just they just took it to him. Now there, there there was a little bit of noise being made both on television by Tony Romo and I think Boomer Esiason at halftime, you know, um was talking about the the referees in the first half and the the number of flags that were thrown against Kansas City and you know there were people online also um, talking about that. And I did think the referees were a little bit too noticeable. You know, that's the thing about referees. If you, if, if you notice them, then in some respects, you you know, they're kind of not doing their job. You know what I mean? It's like, but having said that, I did think Kansas city, you know, I'm not saying every penalty was, was legit, but most of them were. Yeah, and, you know, there are always going to be some questionable calls. And I did think that maybe there were some that the refs, you know, in the Super Bowl kind of it's the biggest game of the year. Maybe kind of let some of those go, um, especially like the real, real questionable ones. 
Um, but they kind of threw flags a lot, so I, I definitely see that point. But man, Woo. Kansas yeah. City. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but you know, you know, but getting back to the flags for a second, I mean, <clears throat> you know, when 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 Kansas when um Tampa kicked the field goal, and then it was a flag because it was fourth and five when they kicked the field goal. And then that guy lined up in the neutral zone. I mean, he yeah. was in the neutral zone. Yeah. And I think the guy on the other end was in the neutral zone too. I mean, yeah, because so, they were know, wondering which one it was because they both were. <laughs> right. I mean, so to me, it was just boneheaded things like that. And look, there was some, there was some clutching and grabbing going on. Look, all defensive backs clutch and grab. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. So you know, to your point that hey, maybe some of this can be let go. Yeah, maybe, but I think that you know the Kansas City guys, man, they were they were holding. I almost didn't get to this call today because as I was coming up the <laughs> stairs, one of the defensive backs was holding me. I mean, it's like these guys, <laughs> these guys they 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 clutch and grab, man. And you know, I man. think what happens though is that when you do that, and you know, when the other team is just the aggressor. And they're physical and, and they're outmanning you. I think it starts to look like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that you're committing these fouls and these penalties. And Kansas, Kansas City was just over overwhelmed and over, and overmatched by the physicality, I thought, of Tampa. Yeah, and it's crazy because um Kansas City is a team that we're used to seeing maybe they'll be down in the first quarter, maybe even the second quarter. And then they'll go wild. And, and, you know, we spoke about it last time. The efficiency at which they score is insane because they could have the ball maybe 10 times in the whole game, but they're going to score nine out of those 10 times and beat you. And they just couldn't get it done yesterday. They just, Tampa, no. like you said, Tampa just completely overmatched them. And it was, wow. Yeah. And, I, and you know, I thought that, um, you know, I kept watching the game. Because I thought that, you know, that Kansas City could come back at some point, even though as the game went along, especially I did say two and a half quarters, only going to be two and a half quarters, <laughs> but it was two and a half quarters the other way. Yeah. <laughs> because about the midway through the third quarter, you kind of felt this game is over, you know. But, but you know, if you think about it, though, Rob, last year against San Francisco, Kansas City was down. Right. Yeah. I mean, they came back in that game. They were down 10 points or whatever. Right. And they came back in that game. And so, you know, you, you're accustomed to Kansas City being able to put some points on the board, figure it out and 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 move the ball. That simply never happened yesterday. Yep. And, and I think that was the biggest surprise. But again, it wasn't this wasn't a function of Kansas City being off their game or Mahomes being off his off his game. To me, all the credit goes to Tampa Bay. Yeah, all the credit. I agree. I agree a hundred and ten percent on that. It has to be. It, it was they just overmatched them. They outplayed them, outcoached them, which is crazy to say because Andy Reid is a is a great coach, Hall of Fame coach. But the way Todd Bowles uh left which the way they prepared both sides of the ball. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Now, the the, the other um, play in the first half that I thought was a turning point was when Kansas City kicked the field goal and they made it 14-6, to six, right? Um, and it was about, a, what, a minute and one second left or something like that, or a minute and, you know, a minute and some change left. And... Tampa gets the ball, and uh, the Kansas City Chiefs started calling timeouts because they had three timeouts. They wanted to get the ball back. Yeah. I didn't think that was the right thing to do, and this is at the time. I'm like, you know what? You guys have been beat in this first half. You just scored. You know, you kick a field goal. Uh, It's a one-possession game, and you get the ball to start the second half. Let the clock run out. You know what I mean? In other words, don't stop the clock for Tampa Bay. You know what I mean? Because Tampa Bay, I think, only had one timeout left because they had blown the challenge and they had to use a timeout earlier 
when the clock was running down. So only had one timeout left. And if Kansas City wasn't stopping the clock, Tampa couldn't do much. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Unless they did it quickly. And they called all three of their timeouts, including on like a third and two or something like that. And Tampa got the first down. And then next thing you know, they're moving down the field. And they score a touchdown mm-hmm. before the end of the half. And I just thought that that wasn't, you know, you talk about Andy Reid and the coaching. I think that was, you know, an instance where it wasn't good coaching. To me, you're getting beat. You got thoroughly beat in that first half. You just put some points on the board. Be satisfied with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, let it go into the half 14-6. Get the ball back yeah. and see if you can come down and do something. But I, yeah, that, I thought that, that was a mistake. Yeah, that could have definitely been actually a, a turning point for a good a good reason for Kansas City, just kind of taking it all in. All right, we just got beat up. Let's regroup here. But, you know, when you give up a score right at the end of the half, that kind of just sucks the rest of the energy out of you even going into the locker room. So I think you're definitely right on that. Just when you give Tom Brady any extra time, it's not a good thing. And they, and they felt that. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And the Kansas city defensive front really wasn't putting pressure on Brady. And also Brady was, look, he, he was very decisive. They, they had a good game plan, some quick drops, the ball was coming out pretty quickly, you know, so you didn't get a chance really to, you know, to get after him. But I thought, you know, as much as the Kansas City offensive line struggled, you know, with all the injuries and everything else, I thought that the, and you mentioned this, that that the O-line for for Tampa Bay, you know, was really, really solid. Yeah, and they did their job. Their job, they had one job, protect Brady. And they did that. He he wasn't we well, sacked once all game. And, and that's it's just wow. <laughs> I can't get over how, how balanced and how well rounded that team looked. And listen, they didn't play especially Brady, he didn't play a perfect game against Green Bay. And we questioned that going into the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. If he played like that, they're gonna be in trouble. And he you know, he didn't play lights out per se, because he only had the two hundred yards, but he played the game he had to play to win. And that's why they're champions. Yeah. I mean, I always felt that, you know, he was in control. That was yeah. the, that was the difference. You know, he was in control. You know, they they had a good game plan. They were out executing um, Kansas City. And you, you just felt that they knew what they wanted to do and they were getting what they wanted to get, whether it was on the ground or, or through the air. And conversely, Mahomes was running for his life. So on the one hand, it was like a controlled offense that was methodical and moving down the field. And on the other side with Kansas City, you had an offense that was scrambling and literally running for their lives. Right. And um, Mahomes was under so much pressure. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, though, for Mahomes. He won the Super Bowl last year. You know, Kansas City has been, you know, one of the top teams in the NFL for the past couple of years with him. So I think, believe it or not, I believe him losing in this fashion, and I was talking to one of my best friends about it yesterday, him losing in this fashion, I think it's only going to make him better. And I think he's going to be hungrier next year. And I wouldn't be surprised if they made it to the Super Bowl again next year and, and actually won it. Because I think Mahomes is going to, Take this, and he's gonna he's gonna learn. He's gonna get better. Obviously, he's a great QB, and there's no doubt about that. But I think he's gonna get even better than he is. And you know, hopefully, he takes it as a learning experience and just continues to do what he's doing. Yeah, I think he will. I mean, and and to me, you know, the one thing I liked about Mahomes yesterday was as battered and as bruised and as under pressure as he was. He just kept competing. Yeah. That's all he did. He just kept competing. And, yeah, there was a couple of times when, you know, the, the ball hit guys in the helmet and he, you know, expressed some frustration. But it was short-lived, and he just got to the next play. And, yeah. and you know, and I, and I contrast that to last year when the Ravens got their clocks cleaned by Tennessee in the playoffs. Um, and Lamar Jackson – 
was on the bench, you know, sitting away from everybody. Yeah. You know, his head was down and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, yo, man, you're the quarterback. And yeah, you know, you're off to a bad start and the team's off to a bad start, but you have to demonstrate leadership. Yeah. And you can say what you want about Mahomes. He's a leader because yes, he, he kept competing yesterday and he was competing under some very adverse circumstances, but he never gave up. He just kept going. And so I think he's going to be fine, Rob. But here's the thing. I think that, you know, the NFL, it's so difficult. It's so difficult to continually get back to the Super Bowl, you know. And that, that you know, I, I heard Tony Romo saying yesterday that, you know, if Mahomes would have won this one, it would have been Brady six, Mahomes two, and he has a chance to get him. He said, but, you know, now it's seven to one. And he started saying things like, you know, Mahomes is going to be in a ton more of these and he's going to win a ton. <laughs> That's what he said, which this didn't make any sense. But yeah, but 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 I thought to myself, Rob, about that's what Dan Marino thought when he went yep. to the Super Bowl early in his career. And that's what people thought about Dan Marino. And he never yep. made it back again. And so and, and nobody questions how great a quarterback Dan Marino was. And so I hear what you're saying about Mahomes. But you know what? We've seen great quarterbacks never make it back. You know what I mean? And so, you know, that's the thing I wonder, you know, because it's just very, very tough to do it in the NFL. And, um, you know, there's no guarantee that Mahomes even goes back again. Now, I'm not betting against him, but I'm just saying what we've seen with New England is so unusual how they were back in the Super Bowl time after time after time. It remains to be seen if Kansas City can do that. Yeah, and you're, to your point, we have Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees, two guys yeah. who who haven't been back. They they mm-hmm. won theirs and haven't been back. So, and and it's funny you bring that up. What we see with what we saw with New England, because um, my wife and I had a conversation, and I'm a Jets fan, so she makes she pokes at me a few times here and there about that because they they suck. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's a scientific. I'll try term to think right of there. another word, but <laughs> but. <laughs> You know, she asked me, have you ever seen the Jets win a Super Bowl? I was like, no, I wasn't even thought of the, la- the last time the Jets even made a Super Bowl. Never mind won it. So, you know, I told her, but you got to understand the NFL. What you see with New England, you guys are kind of spoiled. It's almost like Yankee fans. You know, we got so spoiled in the 90s, seeing the Yankees continuously make the World Series and win, have the three-peat and all this other stuff. We kind of expected a championship every single year, and we still do. So these kind of seasons that the Yankees have or that New England had, when they don't win the Super Bowl, it's almost like, well, what the heck is wrong with this team not winning the Super Bowl? So to your point, you know, what we saw with New England in that dynasty run, it seemed like they almost had two dynasties going on at the same, you know, in different seasons, different eras. But we're never going to see something like that again. And Brady, I think, with the seven rings, and who knows how long he'll keep playing, how many more he'll win, but... Something like what Brady had, I don't think we'll ever see anyone get close to five. Will any individual player, any quarterback get close to five rings? Because it's just, it's just a one of a, once in a lifetime kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, with Brady, one of the things, and, and again, I think he deserves a lot of credit. I mean, and we talked about it before this game, that there was no question that he was the GOAT. You know, there's no question about that. And this did nothing but solidify that. Um, But one thing that I heard last night that was really startling to me was that he had won three Super Bowls by the time he was 27 or 28. And then he didn't win another one until he was 37. He's won four Super Bowls (laughs) from 37 to 43. That's crazy. That's wow. just crazy. He's won four Super Bowls from his like mid to late thirties up until now. That's just that's, a, that that to me is the most, you know, that's really impressive. And 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 I think that's why when you when people are talking about is there going to be a quarterback who can do this? To me, his no. seven Super Bowls 
as a quarterback, as a quarterback, not just talking about a position player who can go from one team to another, you know yeah. what I mean, and all the rest of that, you know, because even like, you know, Antonio Brown, he gets one, Gronk gets one, you know, Fournette gets one. They weren't even there the whole year, you know what I mean? Exactly. But, you know, for a quarterback, seven Super Bowls, to me, that's almost – that's almost more untouchable than Jack Nicholas, 18, you know, majors. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's like um, I, I don't see any quarterback coming <laughs> no. close to that. I just don't. No, I, I, I doubt though anybody will get to five. At least, I don't know, man. If there's a quarterback that's going to get to five, I don't think it's in, it's in the class of quarterbacks that we see today. Yeah. Maybe it's a quarterback, you know, 20 years from now that runs a dynasty or something like that. But to do what Brady has done, I think he's going to be the unquestionable GOAT. I think he, for those who may have doubted at any point be- before this season, he kind of solidified that, I think. Yes. So. Yeah, I agree. The and, undisputed you know, GOAT. And just thinking about it, you know, you know, you remember like when the, 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 Pittsburgh Steelers, the Steel Curtain. When Terry Bradshaw had four, I mean, that seemed like, man, you know, these guys were so dominant. And yeah. they have four, you know what I mean? And then, you know, you had, you know, the San Francisco 49ers, you know, between Montana and, and Young when they had that four. And, you know, it, it just seemed like these teams were so dominant. But this guy has seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just rewrote everything, man. And um, yeah, again, hats off to him. I mean, yeah, he, he and, and he's done it. it in he's done it in so many different ways because he's done it with receivers that you may not know. He's done it with star receivers. Yeah, he's leaned on his defense a couple times. He's done it himself. It's man, I'm telling you. Yeah. And I said it before the last time we spoke. I, I I don't consider myself a Tom Brady fan, but I admire him and respect him because of his excellence and because it's yeah. undeniable. It's just undeniable. Yeah. And so he deserves all the credit that he gets um, because what he I'm not even going to say has done. I'm going to say what he is doing <laughs> is just phenomenal. It's just phenomenal. And so. You know, um, again, I'm not a fan necessarily, but um, I give him all the respect um, because he's just been flat out excellent for a long period of time. Yeah, I'm definitely not a fan of Tom Brady as a Jets fan. Definitely not. Not even close, but I, I'm willing to, you know, fight to the end if anyone wants to question his GOAT status. Yeah. Well, there you have it, man. Um, so we learned a couple of things. Um you know, the 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 defense of Tampa Bay, you know, was legit. And, um, you know, they, they did have a, a good game plan for Mahomes and that chief offense can be stopped. So we learned that. And, you know, the other thing we learned is, you know, if I offer a prediction, bet the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> you were kind of close on the score. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Just the other way around. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Uh, no, I wasn't. But that's okay. Um, that's okay. You know, we'll we'll um, you know, it, it, it's a long time to the next Super Bowl, so I have a time to study the numbers. <laughs> but uh, it's all good. It's all good. But uh, all right, man. Well. Um, we, we put this, we put this NFL season in the books and now we move ahead, um, you know, with, with baseball season. I mean, it, it's still, you know, seemed like it's up in the air, but, you know, we're going to come back obviously and keep our eye on that as we head towards spring training and all the rest of that and NBA basketball is in full swing. There's still a whole lot of sports going on. So, um, college oh, yeah. basketball, all the rest of it. So. There's a lot to do, but NFL champ has been crowned. And you hear these people talking about, what are they calling Tampa Bay now? Champa Bay or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> That's so they corny. Went from, from Tampa Bay back in the preseason. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. 
That's so corny. That, yeah. That's just corny. And <laughs> they would never do something like that in New York, you know, try to come up with something to play off the city's name. That's no. Champa Bay. That's that's <laughs> come on. But Tampa Bay is the is is the you know Super Bowl champions for 2021 and well deserved. Well deserved. Happy for Bruce Arians. A guy who's been around for a long time, happy for Leftwich and for Todd Bowles, a guy who you yeah. know well from his stint yeah. with the Jets. Um, didn't seem to click there, but you know, those guys did a fantastic, fantastic job. And all those guys, all the players, um, yeah. you know, congratulations to them. Yeah, excellent, excellent team. And and you know, the, the Bucks have a great, very diverse coaching staff, so I'm glad to see that happen. Yeah. Yeah, very happy right. for that. Yep. All right, so that's it for this edition of Sports 360. We'll be back soon um, looking at other things going on in the world of sports, and I look forward to, to doing that with you. And I think because there's no championship games, I won't be making any predictions anytime soon, so everybody should feel good about that. But <laughs> let's look to come back real soon, Rob, and we'll keep going on with another edition of Sports 360.